that was absolutely awful trying to switch from one Steve I, Stubbs to another Steve Stubbs. I saw all of that. I'm seeing all of that right now. Okay, yeah. we good? That was pretty amazing. Yeah, we, yeah, we got incredible. it. I mean, it was a okay. pointless thing to do to begin with. <laughs> yeah. But okay. got through it. All right. Yes. So I have the AMC A list, and what that is is a monthly subscription service where for nineteen ninety five a month I get three free movies a week. And my wife said when she first got it for me at the end of twenty eighteen, I you better watch three movies a week. And so from December twenty eighteen to March twenty twenty, I saw one hundred and seventy seven showings in a sixty six weird week period of time which i think is pretty damn impressive and then the pandemic ruined my streak but now movies are back and so am i so it's time once again for some up-to-date movie reviews with steve stubbs of the week dun, dun, dun. this week's installment of steve stubbs represents my 25th week back in theaters and in that time i have seen 46 movies in theaters and this week's a big one this week, I saw the following two movies in theaters. Steven Spielberg's West Side Story and the low-budget indie drama Spider-Man No Way Home. Now first, let's discuss the movie not chosen as my movie pick of the week. What a surprise. West Side Story. Yeah. Um, I, and I want to say something that I don't think film critics fully understand. Okay? <coughs> In Steven Spielberg's West Side Story, the cinematography is exquisite. It's beautiful. It's perfect. High class. Beautiful. This is an incredible looking film. The camera work, the sets, the lighting, the costumes. This is a beautiful looking film. This is a gorgeous film to look at. The lighting and the sets and the set pieces and, and it, the way the camera moves and focuses. It, this is a gorgeous film. It's also boring as shit. The musical numbers are lame. And I think the whole movie is boring. Yeah. Because... As, mu as beautiful as this film is, it's still fucking West Side Story. Yeah. And so what this movie is is just you got a turd, and you polished it real nice. Maybe you got like a some Lysol or some uh, Windex and r shined it up real good. Maybe you got a Sham Wow, really polished it. Uh, you polished that thing really good but it's still a shit, you know? Yeah. And just, I hate West Side Story, and this movie has not changed anything about that. I, I know it's know based... Why you would want, I mean, it's supposed to be a ghetto. Yeah. So why do you want this so beautiful? I don't know. It's a gorgeous film. It is a beautiful film to look at, but... It's still fucking West Side Story. And it's like, Maria, I've known you for exactly 18 hours. Yeah. Let's run away and get married. But first, I need to go kill your brother. And Maria goes, okay, no red flags on my end. This sounds great. And then it, it, at the core of West Side Story, we're gang. We're a gang yeah. of bad guys, toughies, no goodness. We've got knives, we've got chains, we even have a gun. And if we have to kill someone, we're going to. Now let me flip and do some beautiful ballerina moves as I snap. And it's yeah. like, oh, okay, the minute you start doing that, you're not a badass fucking gang. Yes. And I am taken out of the film. Only, only Russ Tamblin can pull that off. Yeah, yeah. And, and just, the movie sucks. And 
Steven Spielberg did a lot of changes to it. I feel that at the at the core of West Side Story is here is a white person writing the music. Here's a white person writing the lyrics. Here's a, a white person writing the script. And this is all about how Puerto Ricans are and how they fucking should be. And like, I'm not a Puerto Rican, but if I was, I'd hate the shit out of this. Yeah. I feel like this movie is the Puerto Rican equivalent of like fucking Charlton Heston playing a Mexican. Yeah. You know? Like this West Side Story has some problems and he tried to change it and now a lot of it is about gentrification and one character is trans and had the character expanded and I really appreciated that having a trans character in West Side Story but it's still shit. It's I I hate the musical and and like like boy boy fuck off. Yeah. Fuck off. The <coughs> only positive I can say about West Side Story is I've heard this song a million, billion, trillion goddamn times. But this is the first time that I heard it as a woman and was able to say, hey, I feel pretty isn't a shitty song. Because I, I, I always dress up as a woman now when I go to the movies and it's like, oh yeah, I do feel pretty. But, again, in the original West Side Story, when they're singing this, they're, like, mending clothes, sewing clothes, because Puerto Ricans were very important in the garment district and for fashion. And so that song is supposed to be done while they are making clothes and sewing clothes and designing clothes because Puerto Ricans are the backbone we're the backbone of, like, New York fashion. But in this, fuck it. Let's make them maids. They'll be singing with mops. Yeah. Because they're fucking Puerto Ricans. So, it, like, it, they're... West Side Story had problems, and now Steven Spielberg took it over. There's still fucking problems. I hate West Side Story. This movie didn't change that. It's a beautiful-ass film. The cinematography, goddamn, has to win an Oscar... That being said, I'm not going to watch this again. Period. So, that's West Side Story. And finally, surprise, surprise, the Steve Stubbs movie pick of the week is Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, spoiler alert, I thought that Clifford actually looked realistic. I thought that Clifford was going to be like, oh, he's going to be like a CGI monstrosity, like that dog from Inhumans. But no, uh, Clifford looked pretty good. Yeah. It, I'd hate to spoil Spider-Man No Way Home for everyone, but I will say that um, I really didn't like uh, John Cleese as the guy who owned the store and sold Clifford to Emily Elizabeth. You know, because yeah. John Cleese is suddenly like a right winger who's in love with J.K. Rowling and fighting against cancel culture. So like, fuck, uh, fuck John Cleese. Um, okay, so Spider-Man No Way Home. Let's talk, let's talk spoilers. Not Wes Anderson's best film, but I thought that uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, there were some good points. Really liked Owen Wilson's uh, Bicycle Story, and I really uh, liked uh, Benicio Del Toro. His part of the film stole, stole everything. Okay, uh, all seriousness. Let's talk about Spider-Man No Way Home spoilers. The problem with Spider-Man No Way Home is if I am paying to see a movie about Venus and Serena Williams, I want Venus and Serena Williams to star in it, not their fucking dad. Yeah. Uh-huh. Fuck Will Smith. God damn. Um, so Spider-Man No Way Home is one of my favorite movies. And when I... And, and, all this year, I have been working on my f favorite films of 2021 list. And when I did 2019, I said, I guess I'll have to put Endgame in this because it was a very important movie for the year. But I'm going to put it at like 10 just because I need to put it on the list. But 
this isn't a movie that I'm going to be watching over and over again. Because if I watch Endgame, I'm going to have to watch Infinity War. If I watch Infinity War, I'm going to have to watch Blank, and it's a whole rigmarole. But Spider-Man No Way Home, that is way higher on my best of list than any other Marvel movie. I absolutely adore Spider-Man No Way Home. It is an incredible film, and I really, really like it. But I'm not going to talk about spoilers. But what I do want to do is talk about Spider-Man No Way Home by talking about AEW All Elite Wrestling. Okay. Okay. And I think if you read between the lines here, you will understand what I'm saying. No spoilers. I'm just talking about All Elite Wrestling. Uh, so I feel that even people who don't know wrestling, a lot of them know who CM Punk is. Yes. Tattooed, straight edge, badass wrestler, very popular in WWE. And then he left WWE and he left wrestling and fans were hurt because (coughs) so many people loved CM Punk. And he didn't wrestle for seven years. And then all of a sudden there were rumors. And people online were saying, hey, uh, CM Punk might be coming back to wrestling. And then they interview CM Punk and, they, and CM Punk says, hey, I don't know how these rumors got started. I'm not coming back to wrestling. I mean, if I was to come back to wrestling, that would be a pretty big deal. And a company would have to pay me a massive amount of money. And that would be a game changer for professional wrestling. But look, I'm not coming back to wrestling, everybody. I'm not coming back to wrestling. (coughs) And then, uh, you know, uh, some reporters, like, I have it on good authority that CM Punk might be premiering at AEW Wrestling soon. And AEW President Tony Khan says, I don't know how these rumors got started. Sure, CM Punk is the greatest in the world. And having him on AEW would be a huge deal. But look, it's just not going to happen. I don't know how these rumors get started, but it's not happening. And then suddenly some paparazzo takes pictures of CM Punk at a gym getting all buff. Oh, why is he training? Is he training for a return to professional wrestling? And CM Punk's like, oh, look, look, look. I don't know why you think I'm in this movie. I mean, I don't know why you think I'm going back to wrestling, but it's not going to happen, okay? Yeah. I haven't been contacted by anyone. And then, like, oh, look, AEW Wrestling is doing a show in Chicago, CM Punk's hometown. And the president of AEW is like, look, it's not going to happen, okay? It's not going to happen. And then, of course... The rumors that everyone said was going to happen did happen, and CM Punk showed up, and that was a huge deal. And even things that don't report on wrestling, like ESPN and USA Today and New York Times are talking about, oh, big deal, oh, game changer. And the president of um, AEW Wrestling said, yeah, okay, now we can admit it. We needed to keep it under wraps, But we know this was the worst kept secret in the history of worst kept secrets. And it was difficult for us to lie to you and keep our lips shut while actually doing all of the things that everyone said we were doing. We apologize, but hey, CM Punk is back. So what I'm saying is Spider-Man No Way Home, real great movie, real great movie. Okay. Ah! Ah! I was worried. I was worried. And I I tweeted that, like, so many fanboys read clickbait, and now if uh, Spider-Man No Way Home doesn't produce Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Iron, you know, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Mephisto, Magneto, Wolverine, fucking... uh, Galactus, eh, the Fantastic Four, fucking mutants, then uh, everyone's going to riot. And, like, all of those things are not in Spider-Man No Way Home, but a surprising amount of them are. And so that's all I'm going to say. 
incredible movie. The theater was almost sold out. I'm really happy that I got my booster. Yeah. Because that was the most people I've had in a theater since before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But it felt a lot like Endgame. So much yelling and screaming and cheering in the audience. And, and it was just a real incredible shared experience that I really, really liked. Kids, stop touching each other. Keep your hands off each other. Stop fighting. I shouldn't have to tell you kids to do this. <coughs> Spider-Man No Way Home, it is the CM Punk of movies. And it was okay. incredible, and I can't wait to go see it again. Love that movie so freaking much. So uh, that's it for Steve Stubbs of the week. Next week, I'm going to see Guillermo del Toro's new movie, Nightmare Alley, which feels... I've seen the preview a couple of times, and I keep... It looks a lot like Todd Browning's Freaks, but without the Freaks, but just in the setting, the, like, carnival setting. And yeah. um, I, I've been seeing previews that say uh, the most shocking ending of a film th that you'll see this year. And it's like... In my gut, it's the ending to Freaks. I, I've seen the preview... I've seen Todd Browning's Freaks. My gut, without knowing any spoilers, my gut is, at the end of this movie, what's his name, the guy who stars in it? He was also in a Wet Hot American Summer. Bradley Cooper. Yeah. My gut tells me at the end of Nightmare Alley, Bradley Cooper has been uh, freaked. Has been turned into a chicken. Basically. That, yeah, yeah that's, my, that's, that's my guess. I'm also going to see the new Matrix movie, and if I can, I'm, I'm going to go see Spider-Man again, because, oh my god, freaking love that movie. So, so join us next week for more up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week! And cut on that.